I'm Rick from Cartoons Classic Cars. In the shop, we're back on the 73 Challenger. You can see where we left off by putting on pretty much the whole firewall back. We finished everything off for the most part there with the quarter panels and the roof. We also put frame rails in this car, but you see the front of this car is pretty much empty. On this video, we really plan on taking the car from a state that looks like this to this. So what we got on this Challenger, we got the whole AMD front end installed, all the sheet metals there. Everything's test fit in place. And I did this because we were just we had some adjustments to do and we're just fine tuning these cars. We don't want to start the welding process and then come to find out the fender's not even close to fitting. We also brought the grill, the owner brought the grill up here, my buddy, he come up here, we test fit the grill, everything fits really good and I'm really happy. That's just the icing on the cake and we just kind of fine-tuned everything we're also on the next fit up in the final one and we did this already but we're going to verify it before we weld up we're going to go over a lot of camber caster stuff especially on these e-body cars it's hard to get caster in them i'm going to show you what caster is how you can get more caster in these cars if they're not welded up and then we're also going to go over if your car is not already welded up and in the factory location some other options to get caster for them to just make them drive a little straighter and not feel darty um, you could see like i said Everything fits good. It's a brand new AMD front end. We got a brand new hood. If you look inside, we added the radiator support. We got our inner structures, our fenders. Everything is, like I said, test screwed in place. We have some paint marker markings on it to just kind of get an idea on where we got to fine tune and grind in the areas a little bit more. Brand new hinges. It closed very well. Obviously the grill's not on all the way. It's got a couple broken studs. Looking down the side of the car, we know the doors on the quarters back look pretty good, but now we're focusing on this front gap right here. And as you can see, the fender's profiled really well with the door for a rough, you know, we haven't gapped this car or anything. This is how the stampings came from the factory. This is also a Dynacorn door and this is an AMD fender. So it's really good to see the two different parts really fit pretty well and flow pretty nice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this car, we're gonna blow it all apart again. I'm gonna put the fenders and the hood and all the bolt on stuff in a separate pile. We're gonna start removing the pieces while making notes and we're gonna start prepping them one at a time. Then we're gonna come back on the video. I'm gonna go over the assembly of the front end. We're gonna go over some crucial measurements on the front end and how you can make your car a little bit better if you are building the front end on it and crucial squaring up points and then we're going to finish it off with the camber caster setting so stay tuned let's get to building the front of this car so we're in the process of removing all the parts we got the fenders hood and the grill off obviously looking behind us what I end up doing, I'll trace out all the edges where we want to put our weld through primer. Any seam that's going to be between two pieces of metal, I use weld through primer. So what we're going to go, we're going to use either a belt sander, we'll use this with a roll lock with a, a flap disc or a, a, an 80 grit, and we'll just go ahead and get every edge. I do take down both edges to bare metal, so the exposed side of the seam where we're gonna butt two pieces together or lap two pieces together, and the other side that is actually gonna be between the two lap joints. The reason is I use um, a spot welder and I really want a good contact on both sides of it. You can see the paint marker on this inner fender a lot easier and what I'm also doing I made some notes as the shock towers in this car we were kind of messing with them and moving them around and you'll see in the future that we actually moved the shock towers back a little bit from the factory and I'll show you why you saw right there I used a hole puncher through this shock tower piece what I'm going to do and you'll see a little bit future in the video we're going to use a spot welder and we're also going to MIG weld up the shock towers I just feel safer with two different versions of welder uh, with my spot welder on frame rail so we're going to use both of them and it's going to work out really good since we know all our parts for the most part fit really well on the test fitting stage I could confidently start welding the inner fender to firewall brackets I did not put these on on this video you saw when we were building this car we did these 
three, four videos back on the firewall install. But when I did these brackets, I made sure I said, do not permanently screw them in. We think they're in the right place, but they might need modification. So here we are now, after they're screwed in, everything test fit, and now we can weld them in and clean them up. Also with this body hammer, I'm not wailing on it, I'm just tapping down the high edges on everything. So now starts the assembly process. We're going to start putting the shock towers in. You see how they go. There is a right and left. They are different. The driver's side shock tower is the only original piece on this car. You can actually see some of the welds are not as nice as everything else, you know, being a, a factory piece. But I pre-drilled some holes in all these things. I made some paint marker references. And what I'm doing, I'm just putting in some sheet metal screws. On both sides you can see I'm also running a tape measure from the front frame rails going back because I also want to make sure both shock towers are about the same distance and they should be showing the same measurements we're not building a circle track dirt car where we only turn left or anything so everything on this car should split 50 50 and be in uniform left to right at this point we're doing the same thing with the radio support we're going to go ahead and we're going to screw in a couple holes on the front and you see with this radiator support you might see a little bit better in the future but I do my US car tool front uh, radiator support a little bit different I think it's better this way and I'm actually gonna cut I cut the radiator around that US car tool and what we'll do we're gonna weld them directly not behind it I th just think it looks cleaner moving on to the inner fenders it's the same process everything for the most part has screw holes in it so I'm just putting in the um, the screws where the holes are so it gives me a good reference point and then we'll go back through when everything's together and when you screw it in I mean you're not gonna drive it down the road but you could jump all over this thing I put enough screws that nothing's gonna move and I'm not worried about it if you're assembling this stuff and you find out that two or three screws in the process don't fit when you pull the whole assembly apart you need to stop what you're doing and start backtracking and thinking something's not going together right and you can't confidently weld this thing all right so we have all our inner structure put together and it's screwed in nothing except the radiator support is welded the reason i had to weld the radiator support is there were some brackets back behind this inner um, structure that uh, we had to get to and do some weld through primer so now that everything else is screwed in place we're going to have to first check our measurements and make sure everything here is going to be within our factory tolerances or what we adjusted what i did basically to get that door gap closed the radiator is actually supposed to be a little bit further forward and I'll show you a second on our measurements I got a bunch of these e-body cars around here so I've taken these measurements over the years and the ones that are untouched touch are gonna measure like this and I'll go over that but what we like to do I like to push the fenders and everything back a little bit to just close that door gap we're talking quarter inch max and then that kind of moves our adjustment what that does is you see this fender right here has this bracket on it so that's what hit what hits against the other side of this radiator support so us by now that the radiator supports not um, welded in we can tilt it back just a quarter inch at the top and you can't see it by looking at it but that's going to close up that gap so let's go ahead and measure everything I'll show you what measurements we came up with this uh, car my main reference point that we're going to use is this one right there so like I said we got our tram my wife's going to hold it in the center of that point and what we're shooting for and i wrote these numbers down on this car that's that's why i have the paint marker too i'm making notes all over the car and we'll just go through later and clean it up but what we're looking at we got 40 inches right here that's from that pin to the top of the radiator support the center of the mounts what i'm looking at for my factory frame support was supposed to be about 40 and a half at that measurement so actually yeah we're about half an inch in on the top um, and but that's also going to give us more adjustment from this bracket bends a little bit so I'm not super worried about that that's where we test fit this car with the gap so our next measurement that we're gonna go I'm gonna go in the center of the first 
bracket on the inner fender. So that's not going to be affected. That should match our factory measurement because we didn't move that piece. So what we're looking at here, 35 and a quarter, and I'm looking at 35 and a quarter on the tram. So that's what that is. Now I want to cross the car over and what we're looking at crossed over. So it's going to be from my wife over there to this corner right here and the factory measurement is 64 and an eighth. Now ours is going to be closer because again the radiator support is pushed forward. So what we're looking at is uh, 63, make sure I'm centered, 63 and three quarters. So we're crossover. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to lock our tram down and my wife and I are going to switch positions. So Megan, if you come over here, grab the. And now the first thing we want to make sure on this front end is this end is square there to there. And right there, you see it fits right in there. We're square at 63 and uh, three quarters. So that measures good. Now we're going to check our two sides over here. So we got 35 and a quarter. So there's 35 and a corner. We're centered on our adjustment. And honestly, these things you can see with the clips and everything, they do adjust a little. With the aftermarket fenders, you might have to open up the holes a little bit or open up here. I've seen that. But like I said, with everything being aftermarket and AMD for the most part, it really does fit pretty good. So our final hole on the radiator support, we're looking at 40 inches here. And that right there is 40 inches and you see we're dead center in our hole. Now, actually our last measurement I have. So we're looking right now, 34 and a half is from shock tower to shock tower. So let's set this thing at 34 and a half and let's see what we got. So we should be centered on the shock towers and then we know we're good. And look at that, we're centered right on the shock towers right there. So we know for the most part, everything on this front end is within our control tolerances. We know we're within our factory measurements, but with the radiator support is our only change, but we did that on purpose. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna clean up and we're gonna set up, cause we're gonna do camber and caster on this car before we start welding everything up here. So like I said earlier, we got the whole front end screwed together, everything's solid. Right now, we're gonna do the camber caster. The idea behind doing the camber caster right now is our shock towers right here and our upper control arm mounts are basically only screwed in with about six screws. So if we set our camber caster, which is gonna be the upper control ball joint, in relation to the lower control ball joint. If we have to move something, we could sit there and adjust this shock tower and get our ideal setting. So that's why we're gonna do it now. I'm gonna show you the first thing to do camber caster, you need to make sure your car is level. You can see we got the level on it, everything is good. I did it both ways before we started this project just to check it. Now, Realistically, if this car had a rake in the back from bigger tires or something, you kind of want to build that into it because that's going to technically change the camber caster. However, for what we're doing right here, levels the way to go and what we want. We're only going to change it a little bit and there's a good chance the owner might actually level this car out. I kind of got the front end ride heights that he wants on this thing. So we're going to set off that. Now, when you're checking your front end, let's not forget that this car, when it came here in the shop well in the 80s this thing was in a bad wreck in the right front end now talking to owner we pulled the bars off and we found that the lower track bar right here the lower front torsion bar is bent and you can see it's going to be hard to align a car with this thing wobbling like that now we got the other one here and it's better it's not perfect we're going to get our basic measurements off that and at the end of the video i'm going to show you what we're replacing with it but this is why we're getting rid of these two the two bars they're just they're worn out they've been they have age on them so um, let's get to assembling the suspension first and then i'll show you about the camber caster and what we're going to do so let's assemble it 
with the front end for what we're doing we didn't really clean anything up we don't want to scratch we don't want to nick anything we did put ball joints in this car because they were so worn out the bushings are actually worn out but we're going to get to them down the road same thing with the strut rod bushing on the front it holds everything straight but it's not perfect all right, so I had to go get a bushing. Um, we put a bushing up in the top just because the, the joint up here is trying to spin. So a car needs to get it replaced. So not a big deal. The bushing needs to be replaced in that, but we got new ball joints in the car. So we got our lower on. We're gonna set camber caster right now. So basically our camber settings, and you see, actually we got to tighten this lower control and you don't want the ball joints loose like that you could see how it was kind of tightening a little bit so let's lift it up and get everything snugged up in the bottom because any movement is going to throw off the the measuring tool so let me just snug this bottom up a little bit okay so now everything's tight on that one. So, like I said, we're gonna set camber caster. So camber is gonna be the in or outward movement of the upper ball joint in relation to the lower ball joint. So negative camber, and this is the same on the other side. Negative camber are when the upper ball joint moves in towards the engine of the car in relation to the lower ball joint, okay? positive camber is when it rolls out. So this would be extreme cases, of course. What we're shooting for on this car is gonna be zero degrees camber uh, setting. No, so we don't want positive, we don't want negative. We want this car pretty much sitting with the wheel flat in the ground. We're actually at ride height. So the owner had the four by four, that's gonna set the lower control arm height of this car that's where he wants this car right now jigged up this wheel should be sitting with the suspension how it's going to go drive down the road now for the caster we're going to set caster so the caster is going to be a relation of the upper ball joint in relation to the lower control uh, uh, lower ball joint forward and back so negative caster is going to be the upper ball joint rolled forward more Positive caster is gonna be the upper ball joint rolled back. What this is gonna do, we're gonna to go towards the positive caster. We actually wanna get as much in this car with these factory settings as we can get. What that's gonna to wanna to do, it's gonna make the car less darty and have a tendency to try to drive straight. So when you start going around zero caster or in the negatives, you get that real darty feel where you're holding onto the wheel and the car is just shooting left and right because the wheel naturally wants to try to straighten out. So like I said, we want the lower ball joint leading us and we want the top one to follow us a little bit. So we're gonna shoot for two degrees. So let's get our upper control arm. Now that we know what we're shooting for, I'll show you how we're gonna measure it. These upper control arms are a new stamp steel reproduction unit because originals were destroyed. So these are cam bolts. Basically you can see they're shaped like a cam on the lobe. As you turn them, this is what's gonna adjust the Mopar front suspension. Ford has this in the lowers. Chevy uses shims for the most part. And there's a bunch of other cars that do different other techniques. But the idea is they're all trying to accomplish something. So depending on how we turn this bolt, it's gonna move the front out or the back out. You could see the slots and the holders that these cam bolts ride in and actually move the A-arm. The new AMD version on the passenger side did need some fine tuning. All right, so we put our upper ball joint onto our spindle. Again, make sure this is tight. You want no as little movement in all this as you can. I mean, realistically, if we're just mocking it up, I mean, do the best you can with it. You just, you wanna get it close. This is again, just to make sure the front aprons, the shock tower and everything's in the right location. And this is the benefit of a frame jig. Because of this frame jig, we can do this. If we're on an unlevel ground out in the driveway, we're just building this thing. Uh, we, we don't have anywhere to measure off of. Okay, 
So our suspension is on there. You see it's solid. We don't need the calipers. It cycles well. And like I said, we could set our ride height and we can check our camber caster or our camber gain. There's a lot we can do with this suspension. However, talking to the owner, he doesn't want that. We're just going down the road. He wants to make sure he gets his caster on it and his camber. So there's our ride height. We have that set. We're gonna need the spindle. Now, I'm gonna have to add a couple shims in here because of my camber gauge. It doesn't like to stick on the end. Another thing too with the rotor, you need to make sure your rotor is flat. There are some rotors that the edge up here becomes unlevel and how you'll tell this when you check your camber caster you need to also spin the rotor around and check it in multiple locations. And what that's going to do, if you keep getting a different reading every time you turn the rotor, well, there's a good chance your rotor is warped. You know, something's wrong with the rotor. So like I said, I know the rotor's sticking out far. I'll show you why the rotor has to stick out. I mean, be shimmed in the back because of my camber caster gauge. It's kind of made for GM cars and trucks, and they're, they kind of have a smaller spindle nut. So I got it snug. We don't want the rotor moving again. So we're using the Long Acre Magnetic Camber Caster Gauge. It's a bubble gauge. So what we got going on here, it's a magnetic base. Again, we want to make sure all this is clean. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to stick it right on the rotor. You want to point it up. There's a bubble gauge here and you level it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our camber. So while we're doing that, we're looking, here's our positive camber and there's our negative camber bubble. So right now, just throwing this suspension up here, we're at one, uh, negative one degree camber. Now what I wanna do, I already know, we wanna take this ball joint because we wanna go for the most caster possible. So my goal is to first get the ball joint as far back as I can in this car and then we're going to adjust our camber prop uh, according to that. So let's move this thing around and see what we got. So right there, I'm already going the wrong way. You can see the ball joint was going forward. So we start going backwards. See how it, right now, we're at the top of the cam bolt. Now it's stopped moving. And you see right there, that's pretty much our rear limit as far as, as, back, as far back as we'll go. So now we'll do the front. And see, as we're doing it, we're already losing negative camber. So right there, looks like that's the furthest we're gonna go on both our cam bolts. Let me make sure. Yep, see, it's already pulling it forward. So right there, so right now, we're at negative half a degree on camber. So what I think we're gonna end up doing, we're gonna pull, we're gonna pull the front in, I think, just a little bit, and we're gonna dial this thing to zero. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm going the wrong way. Keep going till we hit zero on it. Uh, nope, the front's not gonna do it. So go back to our, this is where you gotta play with it, but the idea is we're compromising here because camber and caster are directly affecting each other because you're moving the ball joint two different directions. So we're gonna, we got the front one basically as far as we can. Now we start moving the back one and there we go. We're right there. So we're zeroed up. On the, cam, on the camber right now. So we got our bubble gauge both at zero where our ball joints is set. So the idea now, we're gonna check caster. How you do it, you're basically, you're watching this gauge right here and we're gonna turn this gauge till it's level with the side of the car right there. And you're, so on the left side, you always do it the left side would be you're turning to the left first. The right side, you're turning to the right first. You're turning to the outside of the car first. So we gotta move our wood a little bit, but, so we're gonna turn it, and what we're looking for, we're looking down the side of the car, and actually we gotta come back a little bit, till this side is level with the whole car. So what I do then, we level out this gauge and there's a bubble right here on the caster. Can you see that? So the bubble on the caster, there's a screw. You see how I can adjust it? 
we're going to screw that to zero. Okay, now we're going to turn this gauge 20, and they, these are actually set for 20 degrees. So we're going to turn this gauge, I guess it's 40 degrees because we're turning 20 back to zero, and we're turning 20 forward where this gauge is now straight with the car off this mark. And that's going to show our caster. And what we're looking at on our caster is a degree and a half if you look at our bubble. So that's our caster setting. We got a degree and a half positive, and we got um, zero degrees on our cam uh, zero degrees on our camber. So caster a degree and a half. That's how we're going to check it. Now, let's say we're going. I'm going to mess with these bolts some more. I'm going to tighten them up a little bit more because, like I said, we checked it last time. We're getting two degrees, and it's going to be a while before you know this trial and error. I don't want to put you on camera the whole time. But what we ended up doing, and this might happen this time, if I can't get the caster while adjusting the camera, what we're going to do, we're going to loosen these screws up right here in this whole arm, and all we're going to do is hit the whole shock tower back about an eighth of an inch, quarter inch. And you see, it's not going to affect our camber, but it's going to give us caster in it. So that's a way before the shock tower is welded to adjust your camber caster and get a little bit more out of it. So don't be surprised if I end up doing this. I'll come back. When we come back, I'll let you know. And at the end, when all the fenders are on and everything, we'll check this one more time and I'll show you what we come up with. So stay tuned. I hope this camber caster thing kind of helped out. I know it was kind of quick and there's a lot more you can do. And honestly, you can check it through your travel settings because it's going to change. You can see on this car, right away as soon as we increase the car right here we're getting what's called a camber gain so right now i'm at a degree and a half so don't be completely stuck up on the numbers i mean what you want you want a good round number where you think your car is going to spend most of life going down the road so hopefully this helped you we're going to finish this front suspension out check in both sides of it and we'll come back and we'll start welding this car up all right, so I'm going to bring you back real quick because we are going to move the shock tower. No matter what I do, that degree and a half is where it's at. So I set that degree and a half. I'm going to show you. We'll move the shock tower, and I'll show you how to change this. So basically, remember what I said? We're turning it this way. We're zeroing out the gauge, and we're going to leave it on here, and you'll see we should see our positive caster gain. So um, right, like I said, we got to make sure we go right there. So we're at actually one degree now. So we're gonna just leave it there. One degree with our adjustment, tighten everything up. And it changed a little bit because I took all the screws out. So it did slightly move. So what we're gonna end up doing now, I'm gonna pull our last screw out and now that's gonna move our camber because the top of the arm mount's gonna move a little bit. So we'll take that out. And you can see, like I said, it goes haywire, which is fine. And what we're gonna do, I should do this. We're gonna mark this arm where it is. Right there's where the arm is on the outside, just as our reference point. And we're gonna take our sledgehammer, we're gonna tap it back a little bit. You can already see it moved. Let's go a little bit more, actually. And you saw earlier, I was grinding the inside of this lip on the inner fender. This is why, so we can get this adjustment if we need to. We moved about an eighth of an inch there. I think let's try that. So the first thing we're gonna have to do, we're gonna clamp it in place. Actually, before we screw it, we are gonna just kind of clamp it and see what we do. I don't want to put too many screw holes in this thing. It's just more stuff to weld up. So we're going to clamp it. And we'll just check it. I'll, it will change a little bit with the screw hole in the top. But right now, without adjusting anything else, we should have add caster. Let's, so let's see what we got. So we turn it that way. And you see, we have to readjust our set to zero. Now, this is a good sign. If this bubble gauge was at zero before, more than likely we added almost a degree of caster. So we're gonna go to zero. That should be the amount of caster we just added to this thing. 
and we come back. And like I said, there's our two degrees we're looking for. And then if we go back to zero, see we're right here and it's gonna change a little bit when we pull this whole top of the shock tower in, but we're about on zero on our camber. So this is what I basically was trying to get at. I wanted to show you real quick. This is how you adjust it. We're gonna probably end up doing it to the other side. And if you don't have the shock towers welded in, do your settings this way and get your settings where you want them ideal because these Mopars are really not, they, they're not known for getting anything over a degree, degree and a half caster that's from the factory so all right we're gonna finish this up and we're gonna start welding this car so we match the other side with the camber caster moving the shock tower back slightly so now that both of the shock towers are matched up we got the camber caster settings from the factory that we want to get personally with the factory strut rods and everything we can go ahead and weld this whole front end up i said i'm going to use the pro spot everywhere i ground down we're just running through with this pro spot you could see me adjusting the different settings so the shock towers are obviously thicker frame material along with this front brand new frame rails it's three pieces of metal so i have to turn my spot welder up but against the frame rails i don't really trust it enough so for those areas we're going to come back through and mig weld between the spot welds once we end up cleaning it up all you're going to see is a factory spot welds same thing with this side we just start on one end and we're kind of just working our way around the idea behind this is we want to make sure we don't miss anything we're doing a lot of welding all at once so if you take it in small kind of of a pattern where you can take everything in small sections you know you can just not miss a section because it's a major thing when you're building a whole car if you miss spot welding a whole area going back through with the mig welder i'm actually welding up the whole bottom seam of these shock towers first so this is going to be a solid seamed run front to rear this is probably a little excessive here as the factory had just the spot welds in them however i told you i like to build stronger cars than the factory i like to build better performance cars better handling cars better just all around cruising cars and i think a rigid chassis is going to be better a key shock point would make a rigid chassis so that's why i weld all the way around these things front to back everywhere i can we're coming back through now with the belt sander and we're going to clean up our mig rosette welds so like i said once we clean these up the idea should be the spot weld should be the only thing left on this I am a little spoiled with a spot welder as most people at home that don't have a spot welder like this are going to have to do a whole lot more welding and the cleanup version takes a lot longer too where you could see I just really had to clean up the shock towers and the front frame rail areas. We're going to go ahead and put the hood on the car right now. It might seem a little bit out of place as most put the hood on last. If you have a GM car you pretty much have to put the hood on last because the fenders um, the hinges are attached to the fenders but with this Mopar I really like them that the hoods can go on first you're not hitting your hands on anything you're not over straining and it just makes it easier so now that the hoods on up and out of the way we have to put our top of the brackets going to the shock towers there's also another bracket that usually goes off this bracket to the firewall as like a, a brace almost we're leaving those off I know it would go under this bracket the reason being the next step in this we're going to install the stage US car tool stage 2 chassis stiffening kit for the front end what we like what I personally like to do when I install this kit is leave that bracket out is I just think you know there's nothing uh, 18 gauge of metal is going to add to 16th inch plate steel with dimpled dies all reinforced brackets so I just leave off the factory metal I just think it looks cleaner same thing with the lower radiator support I don't put the factory lower radiator support behind that bulky just reinforced piece I really think in the Mopar these shock tower braces go into upper cow braces along with the subframe connectors underneath the car. It really changes the whole character characteristics of this car. I really recommend these on most installs if people aren't looking for a 100% factory. 
I will say it's a really quality bracket, but you're going to have to spend some time with, I usually take a flap disc and everything and a marker, paint marker, and we're just tracing out the edges and the gaps. And you see, as I'm welding this thing in, there's almost no gap in there. That's what you want when welding. You want good, consistent, strong weld. And you see, for the most part, I'm pretty solid on my runs on these support braces. Coming down to the home stretch, we're going to put the fenders on the car the one thing I do want to point out you are going to have to trim there's a bracket inside the fender in the rear that is going to hit the U.S. car tool side braces so it's just a small cut but at that point it takes two three minutes max once you just trace it out so be prepared for that also don't crank on your fenders you might end up bending them so once you do that we're going to final eyes this car by installing the front grille it still needs work so we're going to get to that in a future part of this car all right so wrapping up the video and showing you a couple more things before we call it a night um, you see we got all the panels on both sides of the car everything's pretty much bolted on for the most part somewhat adjusted we got a little more fine tuning to do but most of the gaps are around 3 16 these are where all the panels pretty much came as they're stamped out um, it's from amd dynacorn all these companies so all in all the car looks really good i'm really happy with the engine bay the way the welding went on everything else another thing about the welding yeah, i don't know who needs to hear this i did years ago you don't have to lay dimes when you're mig welding a simple just run down pass with the welding it should look like these pictures right here and it should just flow real easy it looks like most factory welds really when you're running the dimes you're kind of putting excess heat and you're just you, you, there's no need to do that if you want to run dimes start taking welder so like I said you see everything here is profiled real well I'm gonna go over the front suspension one more time and what we got going on we bought so I said the rods were bent and we we're gonna buy a replacement well here's our replacement this is a QA1 adjustable rod and it pretty much bolts into place and what I was saying we set this car up at with the factory settings but I told you we're basically, I want to do that in case someone wants to go back to a factory rod. But these QA1s, if you have one of these cars and you can't get caster in there and you want to adjust it and you don't really care about 100% factory look, they look like they're going to be a very good product. Let me show you what we got going on on the camber caster gauge just to show you our change that we made. So basically right now on this gauge, I set it for our factory settings with our stock uh, length. So what we're gonna do, I also wanna show you our camber gain in relation to caster and what caster does to camber while cornering. So we turn the car around to the left like we're checking our camber, caster. Now, you see we set this on zero. This is looking at positive camber. So what the positive camber is, that means the ball joints rolled back. You see, we did change it. And what that's doing, that's helping us in the corner because this is the inside turn where the tire's unloading. So it's gonna put more of a contact patch on the inside portion of the tire, helping us. So now when we turn to check our caster, Okay, you see there's our 20 degrees. That was our two degrees we came up with on the factory setting. Now, look at our, um, our camber, it's back a little bit it came back down it's still on negative camber which isn't ideal basically that's still using the outside of the tire because it's rolled over this way more so um, I'm sorry rolled inside so we're getting a little bit negative but it's not enough so that's rolling on the inside of the tire as it's loading which you know the tire has a tendency to push outward this way so loading on the inside tires where you want but let's say we want more negative camber in the corner which is going to give you more load force on the tire so what we're going to do over here in this rod we're going to basically shorten this rod and you see that's going to and i'm going to go i'm going to do extreme case just to show you so we're shortening this rod by pulling it in and you see i mean you could see the whole steering um rotor the rotor moving on the the basically our line our kingpin line which is upper and lower ball joint so now you see we didn't change our camber at static basically cruising straight down the road so now we're going to turn this wheel 
and we turn it on the inside, okay? So you could see, it looks like we added a bunch of camber. Now, what we did now, look what else we did. We added more positive caster. So that means the top of the wheel is out further this way. That's going to help us turning left using the outside of the tire more. Now, when I turn it back the other way, we should throw more negative camber in the car, helping it loading. So this is another thing that really helps us out. Now, look at our caster jump up right there with that adjustment. We threw two degrees of caster in here. And then look at our negative camber. We added probably what was that, uh, about half a degree of negative camber, so now the tires leaned in more as it's going in the corner, really helping us turn. So all in all, you could see how these arms are gonna be very beneficial. Um, it's gonna be something else that's really gonna help in the fine tuning on your car. And honestly, when we do the Firebird or some other stuff, I used to build race cars back in the day, so we would spend hours and hours cutting off mounts, moving mounts, and getting Ackerman, camber gain, you know, camber caster, settings and uh, there's a bunch of different things that you want to focus on. What the, the, my buddy with this car wants to do, this is going to be more than enough adjustment that he's going to play with. And also that caster, there is a limit where you overload the tire. If you're going too much at an angle coming in a turn, now you're only using the edge. You basically want the tire as the car is loading this way. So you're turning left or uh, right. So you're turning right, now the tires leaned in this way as the car, the tires pushing into the corner. So that's what you want to happen. But if the tires too, turn too far, you're getting a unlevel, you're using too far on the inside. So, and, and the whole car is trying to roll over. So that negative camber is helping with the rollover. I know I kind of went over this quick. I really hope it helps out. These are just the basics. And a lot of this is more theory. I think if you're around on a street car, two degrees to four degrees, that's more than enough uh, positive caster. And then, like I said, going down the road, you can even add a little bit of negative camber to help you out if that's what you're stuck on. So I hope this really helped you out. Um, this video you saw, we built this car. I think we did it better than the factory settings. The whole car is aftermarket parts. Um, I think it came out really well. We, we, like I said, we still have some more work to do in just fine tuning it. And then we're off to the, basically stripping it down to bare metal and epoxy phase. So stay tuned with us. We're gonna come back on this car. We're gonna finish gapping it. We're gonna finish the subframe connectors, all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe it helped you out. Um, I appreciate all the constructive criticism everyone gives the channel and the feedback. I really, really do appreciate it and the people subscribing. So again, comment, like, subscribe to our channel. I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars and we'll see you on the next video.